Welcome to the lecture 11, the last lecture of Tripoli 23. We'll be talking about transmission lines. What are transmission lines? So you might be wondering that. Transmission lines generally are media that are used to transfer current. So any structure or media that enables the transfer of information between two points. In terms of our circuits, that's the wires. In Tripoli 23, transmission lines are waveguides. Our transmission lines basically guide electromagnetic signals from a sending port to a receiving port. This transmission line theory actually bridges the gap between our electromagnetic fields and circuit theory. What's the difference? In circuit theory, we assume that the electrical length is much, much greater than the physical length. But in transmission lines, these, this, this is not true. The physical dimensions of our uh, transmission lines are a fraction of a wavelength or several wavelengths long. With that, we have a distributed parameter network and the voltage and currents vary in magnitude and phase over the length. So if you measure the voltage, sorry, if you measure the voltage from here to here, you'll get a different voltage when you measure the voltage from here to here. Why is it so? We learned from the previous lecture that waves, that sorry, that, electro, that electric field and magnetic field actually travel over space. And depending on how, uh, how fast the voltage, or sorry, the electric field magnitude is changing, so recall that if in this point, your uh, electric field points here, after some time, it will point in the other direction. Okay. This is because after some time t, the electric field from here already traveled into another point at here. Okay. This is also true in our transmission line. If the voltage at this point changes by some frequency omega, it takes time for this voltage to travel from one point to another. It takes time for, quote unquote, the information in one end to, be, uh, to travel to the other end. Okay? That, uh, that means if we have a uh, slow changing voltage, what does that mean? Omega is very small. If omega is very small, the change in voltage here is slow at this point. That means that this voltage has already traveled at this point before the voltage changes. That means the voltage here is approximately equal to the voltage here, which is the basis for our circuit theory. However, if we have a very fast voltage at this point, so it already changed in polarity, but your uh, wave has not yet traveled a significant distance before the voltage has shifted. Therefore, it looks like the voltage is traveling from this point to the other. So it seems like we have a traveling voltage wave in our transmission line. How do we derive how fast it travels and how do we derive how it behaves? Consider then breaking the transmission line into very small parts. So this length z here is divided into delta z. These delta z is very small such that the voltage from this point to this point 
the change in voltage from this point to this point is very small. This small uh, length of transmission line here can be represented by a lumped element model of a transmission line, which is represented as a series RL in a parallel RC circuit. This R and C, right, uh, RL, G and C right here are the characteristics of the transmission line. This R is the resistance per unit length. This L is the inductance per unit length. This G is the conductance per unit length. And this C is the capacitance per unit length. So it's distributed over, uh, evenly distributed over the whole transmission line. Okay, so that's what I told you earlier. With this, we can perform circuit analysis. At the left end of the circuit, we have a voltage V of ZT. At the right end, we have a voltage V of Z plus delta Z T. This voltage right here can now be uh, solved using voltage division. Do you remember, this is an impedance and this is an impedance. The voltage here can be solved using voltage division. You divide this voltage by uh, the total impedance seen by the voltage and you multiply it by the impedance here, you'll get the voltage here. So recall that for the resistance, the voltage and the current are related by Ohm's law. So as the conductance, the current across a capacitor is defined by this equation and the voltage across the inductor is defined by this equation. So applying KVL in this loop right here, we get this expression right here. So we transfer V of Z, del Z plus delta ZT to the left side and take the limit of that as delta z approaches zero, we get the partial derivative of v of zt with respect to z. So that's actually the definition of the partial derivative. Now, if we apply KCL here, applying KCL and uh, letting delta z approach zero, we get a derivative with respect to current, sorry, derivative of current with respect to Z. So we have two equations and two unknowns. We can, cre uh, we can solve for the characteristic equation of this system. So uh, if you look at the equations, it should look familiar. Right? It should look familiar. It looks like your Maxwell's equation. Okay. Specifically, Faraday's here and Ampere's law here. Okay. So uh, these two equations are collectively known as telegrapher's equation or the transmission line equations. So we can solve for the voltage function and the current function using uh, these two equations right here. Now, if we assume sinusoidal dependence, that means uh, V of ZT is defined by this phasor function right here. Okay? So basically, our time dependence is assumed already. So substituting these into these two equations right here, we get these two equations. So uh, when you solve these two, you want to derive, for example, we want to get the uh, voltage. Okay. Take the derivative of the first equation with respect to Z first. And you get this equation. And noting that this is equal to this, then we are left with this equation right here. And it's actually the wave equation to get V of Z. This uh, function right here is the propagation constant for the wave equation. So this is gamma squared. 
as you recall, gamma from the previous lecture for our lossy, uh, lossy medium. Okay. So if we try to derive the equation for the current, we'll also get the same result. So the current and the voltage actually propagate okay, actually propagate within our transmission line. So the general solution for these two equations, right, uh, for, for of this these two equations, is that the current is a wave has a forward component and a backward component. Similarly, the voltage is also a wave that has a forward component and a backward component. component. Okay. To derive the relationship between them, well, consider first the voltage. If you, get, if you get the negative derivative of the voltage, you get this expression right here, which is equal to this. Okay. This is from your uh, KVL equation. So you can solve for I of Z by dividing this function or this derivative by R plus J omega L. So the expression for current becomes this equation. And let's consider this first. This gamma over R prime plus J omega L prime, this actually represents your impedance. Okay. So let's define the characteristic impedance as the forward, the magnitude of the forward wave divided by the magnitude of the reverse wave, which is equal to negative V, uh, negative the magnitude of the reverse wave over the magnitude of the reverse wave for the current. Okay. So uh, that is just basically the reciprocal of this, and since gamma, okay, we already got gamma earlier, it's this expression right here. Substituting that, we get the formula for the characteristic impedance of the line. This characteristic impedance describes the behavior of our transmission line. Okay. So just some note, if you divide V of Z by I of Z, that is not Z0, okay? Z0 is not your, uh, it's not basically not equal to V of Z over I of Z. So this is a different uh, value. All right. So uh, to summarize all that, your voltage uh, function is actually a wave. If you put the time dependence back or you want to get the time domain expression, you get this these equations right here. So since there are waves, there's a velocity for the wave and there's also a wavelength. So the, the wavelength is just the same, 2 pi over beta, where beta is the imaginary component of the square root, or sorry, the imaginary component of the wave number or the propagation constant. All right. And the phase velocity is equal to omega over beta, which is equal to the wavelength multiplied by the frequency. Consider the case when we have a lossless transmission line. So recall for our initial discussion, uh, we have a general transmission line. The propagation constant is, is complex. What does that mean? If you look at the equation right here, the forward traveling wave is actually attenuated. The backwards traveling wave also attenuated. Our lossless transmission line, uh, in most cases, the loss is very small. If the, the losses are negligible, then the resistance per unit length and the conductance per unit length is approximately zero. So a good question is that it is why is it that? I'll leave that to you. If R is zero, that's essentially short. If G is zero, that's essentially an open circuit. Therefore, the properties of the transmission line becomes this. Your gamma will be purely complex, sorry, purely imaginary. And uh, the beta becomes equal to omega square root of L prime C prime. Your characteristic impedance will become purely real. 
That's square root of L over C. And the general solutions become this equation, these equations rather, right here. So it should look familiar. For your lossless propagation, remember that gamma is equal to J beta, which is equal to J omega square root of mu epsilon. The intrinsic impedance for our plane wave propagation is the square root of mu over epsilon. So let's look at the units. Okay. Mu is measured in is the unit of mu is Henry per meter. The unit of L prime here is also Henry per meter. The unit of epsilon is Farad per meter. The unit of C prime here is also Farad per meter. So actually, these two are analogous to each other, if you think about it. So basically, the transmission line propagation is uh, actually similar to your plane wave propagation. Right? So getting the uh, wavelength and the phase velocity, we also have uh, we just use these equations right here and you'll get them. All right. So this is the basics of your lossless uh, transmission lines or your transmission lines in general. To get R prime, L prime, and C prime, G, C prime and G prime within a transmission line, you have to look at the electric and magnetic fields. So the previous derivation is based on lumped components. So using what we know in circuit theory, we can actually solve for the properties of the transmission line. So if we use the electromagnetic fields, we can use them to derive the properties of the transmission line, R prime, L prime, G prime, and C prime. And you have been doing this for the past semester. So let's look at the field analysis first. Consider a material with the following properties. Permeability mu, surface resistance R sub s, complex permittivity epsilon. Okay. So this complex permittivity right here now represents a real world, uh, real world dielectric. So this J epsilon prime, prime here is actually, uh, or actually represents the loss. Right, so the defining elements of a transmission line is that it stores, it stores energy in its magnetic field and electric field, and we can derive the inductance per unit length and the conductance per sorry capacitance per unit length from these uh, energy stored within the fields. Okay. Also, from the fields we can also get the R prime and G prime right? using the definition of both. Right? Example, consider a lossy coaxial cable with a traveling transverse electromagnetic wave. So uh, with that, the electric field is this function right here and some propagation function your uh, magnetic field is this multiplied to some propagation okay so to get our uh, inductance per unit length we'll just apply the formula so it's already given hs so you get uh, the magnitude of that that is equal to this. And you can solve for L prime, you'll get this function right here, which is what you have solved before. For the capacitance per unit length, we'll use the electric field. And uh, you get this function right here, which is already shown before. The resistance is different, but the uh, first you need to define a path. Okay, from your uh, inner conductor to your outer conductor. Okay. 
So uh, that is just from here to here, your inner radius to your outer radius. You'll define that path. And you'll get this expression for your resistance, okay, for your uh, conductance. So the surface here is from your, excuse me, is basically within your uh, coaxial cable. And you'll get this expression for your uh, for your conductance per unit length. So basically, we uh, the field analysis is used to get or to determine the characteristics of the transmission lines, and with them, we can get the properties or the behavior of your traveling wave within your transmission line. Now let's consider the case where our transmission line is terminated by our uh, by a load Z sub L. So it, when we derive the transmission line earlier, the properties of a transmission line, we assume that it goes on and on forever. Okay? So we assume that it goes on and on forever. So what would happen if we terminated the transmission line by a load Z sub L, an arbitrary load Z sub L. This will be the, uh, the focus of the discussion on the next part of this lecture. Right? So if you have any questions from the topics previously discussed, do not hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Thank you for listening. I'll see you when I see you.